Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pomacher. We are here in downtown O'Galley's Art District for the Artworks O'Galley Fine Arts Festival. Uh, and we're here hanging with authors John Catapano and Tyson Hanks from the Dark Alley Crew. Tyson, thanks for coming with us again. Yeah, John, man, good thanks for again. See that? We didn't scare them off. They came uh -huh. back. <laughs> It takes about a year for it to wear off, and then, <laughs> and then they'll trust me again. Uh, guys, how's it going today? Good. Now, you guys are inside, yep. peddling books. Yeah, author for authors having a book fair. They're, the they're doing a great day. There's a lot of authors in there. You got now, readers coming through? 50, about 50. Yeah. About 50 authors. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. I think John and I are the only two horror authors of the, of yeah. the 50. So yeah, we, yeah, we, we were talking got earlier. You got that market. Right? This is your corner. That's right. That's right. Um, all right, guys. What have you been doing for a year, man? It's, we haven't been talking in a while, so what have you guys been doing? I know, you're just sitting home on the couch, relaxing. <laughs> well, I am, I'm retired. Sucking up those right. royalty checks, right? right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, All the authors online went, what? What's that? Last last year, we did kind of an informal market research when we were, we did a bunch of shows last year for uh, the books that, we had, that came out last year. Mm -hmm. And we found out that people really don't want to commit to a, a long story, to a, a novel, you know, three, four hundred pages. That they really prefer short stories, so we didn't. So now, what do you have? A short stories, short stories specifically, or novellas, or where, where, where even is novellas? That? Even novellas are, like, are people you know, like, yeah. I, I, I said it, and I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit for for the camera and the World Wide Web here. But I said, yeah, because you guys have no idea. <laughs> Nobody you should see the things that little cosplay Michael says to me I bet. that he hears on YouTube. Right. I bet. Sure. Wow. Here's the, the the metaphor I use. It's like nobody wants to get married; they just want to casually date. And I and it seems so. You can see where I could have gone with that, but um, they went there. Of course, <laughs> they're all the way home going dating. <laughs> but it's the same it's a euphemism. Thing. It's the same thing with their their reading. I feel like it's it's with short stories. Um, to your point, not so much novellas, but. You know, they can come and go, call it. It's a booty call. They can go back to a short story, <laughs> short story collection. The literary booty, calls. booty call. There you go. Um, I, I'm guilty of it. You know, I can I can read four or five different authors right now and mix it up. And, hey, I know I'm only committed to 15 or 20 pages. I don't have to go out and buy a ring. Yeah. You, you know, know what I mean? It, it is. I, uh, I, I did my, my first two novellas, and my last one was a short story. It was just, and I didn't even know. I kind of had to go online to check with the publishing if I'd be able to publish something sure. so short on yeah. its own. Mm -hmm. um, but it was mostly a doing the show and everything, having the time to write it right. and write it well, and b knowing that you know readers would get a book and they'd read a chapter or two and then they put mm -hmm. it down and come back you know and have have anecdotally tell me I did read it. It just took me four months exactly. And even it's, it, I said it's two hundred pages. How did it take you four months? Well, I read two two chapters and then I put it's it down. It's hard to hear that as a writer. Sometimes. It is because no. I want you to be compelled. Yeah. I want you to get to the end of chapter I two and put go, it down. That's, that's right. What you want to hear? From uh, sure. Unless you're Dan Brown. Good luck with that, guys. <laughs> uh, I, I, honest, Lord, I actually read uh, um, a Da Vinci Code in one sitting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't put it down, yeah. but it's very rare that that happens. Yep. Now you guys have you have a short story book here well, that came out of the research. Right. And, and is this is the, this is a short story. This is what well, this is. Short story. One, two, three, four, five, six authors. Mm -hmm. Does you each take a page? I mean, well, tell me the story behind this because I know the story. I want to go ahead and let Possibly the, the awesome. YouTube. There's a, a concept in writing here that I thought mm -hmm. was absolutely fascinating. Sure. So. Uh, GWs, as you mentioned, were part of a, a writers group called the Dark Alley Crew. Um, you know, and aside from just getting together at shows and having cocktails and, and spinning ideas off each other, we decided that it would be kind of fun to collaborate on an anthology, which isn't necessarily anything new among among writers groups. So we decided we had to put our spin on it, and what we came up with was this idea of a blind round robin. So um, our editor basically looked at this and said, "Let me come up with the most god awful cliched." horror opening line I could think of, which is, it was a dark and stormy night. night. So our very first author, all she Thank could, you, Mary Shelley. Yeah, right? <laughs> all See what she, you've done to us. <laughs> that was, it's, 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 it's birthed the entire genre. It was a dark and, it's always a dark and stormy yeah, night. It always. Us, but. So our first author used that opening line and basically wrote a chapter. 
Okay. Based on nothing more than nothing the more dark than it was a dark and stormy night. night. You right. got it. Uh, so what I got then, and I didn't know who I was receiving this from until after this thing was published, but um, what I got as the second author was the last page and the last page only that she wrote. Of that first chapter. Of that first chapter. Mm -hmm. And all I could do when I wrote my piece was use one page worth of, of info as to where I thought she was going with it and try to continue the story in my mind. Okay. The third author happened to be John. He got my last page and my last page only. Mm -hmm. And so, so on, on and, and so, so forth. Right. Okay. It, somebody had to wrap it all up. Our, our editor, uh, Amy Zunk, did the, the editing on this. Okay. Um, fantastic job. And I don't know how much, we, we haven't really talked to her about how much she actually had to clean up and kind of kind of work well, I, What I was going to say is that somebody has to end the story. Correct. Uh, the last author. The, the last, last author has to end the story Absolutely. based on nothing more than somebody's last page. Exactly. Of the, of the chapter before. And at the end, the entire story. Exactly. And it's, needless to say, this does not end the way... You would think it would based on the on the beginning. It doesn't even end the way Melissa thought it would. Exactly. Setting alone, I you know I won't give too much away, but setting alone, we go from um, the Louisiana bayous to Bourbon Street. Uh, we were able to make that connection, but then uh, at one point, there's this almost mythical, like glacial, almost Scottish Highlands kind of area, and then I think it ends in one of the nine rings of hell. <laughs> so it goes from Louisiana bayous to New Orleans to Mystery Glacial to ah. Wow! See, I, I got a name of a character without much more information. With no backstory, right. no so, nothing. So now I know that Melissa started it with a character who was like 14 years old. That's one of the things I was going to ask Mine, you. Mine, unfortunately, when I got the name, I went, oh, this guy's like in his late 20s. So he kind of morphs. Yeah. <laughs> he grew up fast Very in quickly. like three pages. Important he, characters he, die and disappear yeah. and replace. So. So that's I was going to ask you. The difficulty there is in is in the characters, mm -hmm. because if you get the last page, if I haven't mentioned every character, sure. right. then you don't know who they are. Even the main character um, stays true yeah. through, throughout. Yeah. I mean, he's he's always there. A few more come and come and go, and I say you're getting you're getting six authors here, so six chapters. And when I read the the full piece, it's almost like you're getting every third or fourth chapter of a book. So as long as you have some sense of your own imagination and kind of create Fill your own gaps. sort of sort of you know uh, invent your own adventure sort of thing, wow. you can kind of it's it, it truly it, it'll be different for everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. if all you're going to do is read this cover to cover and only process what you read, it's going to be the same, and it may be a little on the convoluted side. If you can branch out with your own imagination though and think about where this could have so gone, this is sort and, of the, the imaginary video game in your mind. Absolutely, reading a chapter and, and then creating some, and then reading another chapter. And, and, and really, there was two purposes to this. One was to be able to have a showcase for all the writers in the group so uh -huh. that people can see the difference in styles, the difference in tones that we use. And the other was to do something that we could donate to charity. Uh, you know what? And you guys uh, you guys buy this book, uh, this anthology book online, uh -huh. then uh, uh, the proceeds, the actual... We've got two charities right now that uh, uh, once we cover printing costs, uh -huh. the rest of the profit goes to um, Warrior Dogs. So uh, Military uh -huh. Cannons, there you go. And uh, Spina Bifida Foundation Research. right fantastic now. Spina Bifida Research. Guys. Really, so. really fantastic. So you get a copy of a short story that is, I don't know what the readers are going to think, but as a writer, I think this is the coolest idea I've ever heard. You know what? The I cover just art, love the it. cover art alone mm. is worth That's it. That's amazing. And if I could talk just a little about that. Please, that. because... The gentleman that did our cover art, his name is Michael Broom. And Michael right now um, does all the storyboard artwork for The Walking Dead, the TV show. He's got a presence in Hollywood. He works on the, the new Orville Marvel. show. He's done some wow. character. Uh, X-Men. He's done a lot of special effects. So very, very talented artist, and we are lucky to know him. That's the creepiest cover in <laughs> in that room especially. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, although I don't know. I saw some of the romance covers. Uh, yeah. It's close. Equally, it's equally, equally scary. scary. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we have, okay. just over here, this is a, for this year, this came out as sort of a Halloween yep. release, uh, Trick or Treating Tales. Out of, out of all that research, Tyson and I sat down last year, right about this time, and said what we really need to do is do a, a short story anthology, because that's what people are looking for. Uh -huh. And we, every, every year when we do these shows, we try to show up with something new, rather than try and sell the stuff that we've been selling before. So we decided on doing an anthology. Um, we're both fans of Ray Brad Bradbury and Ray Bradbury tale, Tales. So um, it's dedicated to him, and a lot of the stories are Bradbury-esque. Uh, so I wrote three short stories, Tyson wrote three short stories, and basically Tyson took care of the wraparound. There's a wraparound story. The basis of the story is, um, in a town where these three children are going trick-or-treating, 
and the town's um, residents. The, the residents in the town. The tradition is, you give out candy, and you have to give out a scary story. Ooh. So these people go, you know, kids go to different houses and get these different stories. Um, it's a pretty wide range of things. We and tried three to days it. later, the parents go around to the same houses and beat the hell out of them. <laughs> well, <laughs> interestingly enough. Um, and, you know, and, and what we did is we tried to tone back some of our, of our other writing. So this is actually, we recommend this for tweens and up. It'll be entertaining for parents. Right, did you just, much younger did you, than uh, I you just legitimately for. use the word tweens? Yep, sure did. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's a marketing. Uh, yeah. You got it. You got. You know. So basically, my three stories center around the real story of Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, what Which happens? Which is a little dark to start uh, with. What happens? Tone it back. What happens when you go to uh, when you go trick or treating and somebody passes you runes, which is basically a curse. Yeah, yeah. The, but luckily, your grandmother happens to be a witch. And then my last story centers around, um, if you needed help around the house and you could bring a monster back to life to help you, which one would it be? Uh, okay. So. <laughs> you two, answer the question in the comments down below. Oh, I want to see idea. your comments. Yeah. yeah, because I want to know. One classic, you guys call it a classic universal monster. One classic monster yeah. to help you clean the house. Well, yeah, put up ceiling fans, move furniture. <laughs> yeah. You're retired, you you're wash the car. Yeah, yeah wash, wash the, the car. car. So exactly. which one? Which one would cause the less, the least trouble? Yeah, doing exactly. It, you know, because <laughs> somebody's going to notice the werewolf washing your car. Just saying. And Possibly. Unfortunately, what happens is since it's it's a little bit busier and the doorbell keeps ringing on trick or treat, the guy goes to answer the front door and the monster goes out the back. So uh, that's kind of the basis. And then, for that. And, and and the neighborhood takes like hours to figure it out. Oh, yeah. It's Halloween. It's Halloween. It's <laughs> Halloween. That's right. Uh, it would get that's. I always love that question because Halloween is such a fun time and mm -hmm. with the costumes and the, the festivities, you know, what happens when monsters start walking the neighborhood on Halloween? It's and everybody just assumes it's someone's dad. <laughs> it's right. funny because I know that, uh, you know, we've talked about this, but I know you haven't looked at the first No, page. I haven't yet. That's kind of how, that's kind of how I wrote the opening was to just, hey, here's, here's how Halloween got its start back in the old pagan days. Here's what it's turned into. And it's that whole concept of, look, you're walking the streets. You don't know what's, what's real, what's, real and yeah. what's, what's not, yeah. you know, and that's kind of why these, these kids love it as, as well. So it's a, a neat concept. That's fantastic. My three stories real quick, the rundown, I think, uh, the first one is, um, uh, Crazy Uncle Joe, and what does he keep in his cellar? And why is it? Why is it, I don't want to get too. Well, much some of you, if you watch a Hanging with Web show, you know a little bit about Uncle John. Uncle John, yeah. Uncle John was Uncle in the. Uh, Uncle John was in the cellar. Uh, my sister just got back from a movie premiere. My Uncle John is a zombie. Ah. And it's not a zombie. Not a zombie. It's, it's not a zombie. Not a zombie. Uh, Uncle John was a zombie, and he apparently was living in the basement for like <laughs> years, uh, trying to not yeah. be discovered. Right. So see that Uncle Joe now. Uncle Joe keeps something in his cellar, and our three kids would like to know just what that is. And I'm not hanging out with so. any of these people's uncles. <laughs> That's right. These people have crazy uncles. These um, creative-minded people. The second story, and probably the one I had the most fun writing, is about um, a retired couple that open a bed and breakfast. Something that happens all the time. Uh, they soon find out that the bed and breakfast is haunted. Um, and it drives business. There's a lot of people that... The bed and breakfasts are always haunted. haunted. They are pretty usually, sure, yeah. I mean, if it legitimately is, uh, you know, it's a good marketing platform. It drives a lot of business. But what would happen if somebody got mad and came in and exercised that place? Now your bed and breakfast is no longer haunting and your business fails. Well, the wife takes matters into her own hands and she kills her husband so that he can now haunt the property and drive business. It's a valid <laughs> marketing tool. Exactly. It's a valid marketing tool. If you run a bed and breakfast... And somebody comes in and exercises it, half your business that's just right. fell away. Yeah. Everything that's on your brochure is now false advertising. So she has to do something about it. So, so whoever the, wrote that check is getting, is gone. That's the second story. And then I kind of closed out my uh, my uh, half of the, the, the book with a story about uh, an old farm on the outskirts of town. And a farmer, he's got uh, prize winning uh, pumpkins as a pumpkin patch but he gives most of the credit to his scarecrow named Walter. Um, and Walter's a special kind of kind of scarecrow. A special uh, kind yeah, of again, scarecrow. Yeah, I, I don't want to get too yeah, much we're not going to get that away. I got to get the book. Walter's not a scarecrow you want to come across on a on a dark and stormy night, if you will. Scarecrows in general, those are They're, pretty uh, scarecrows and clowns. Scarecrows mm -hmm. have a a uh, a long horror history. They do indeed. 
They're never what. They're just not. The, they don't. Walter scare away has the crow. a place among the best of them too. I'm That's fantastic. Say. Walter the Scarecrow. Yeah. And I don't even like her. I'm going to ignore that card. She always does that to me when we start having fun. Uh, where are you guys headed up the road, man? What, what cons appearances? Tomorrow. Where are you literally up the road. Tomorrow, we're doing uh, Claremont Comic Con. Uh, fantastic Claremont event. Florida. Fantastic event. But, John, you'll be back uh, in a few I'll weeks. I'll be back, back here in Melbourne, Melbourne uh, December 9th at the mall. For doing Jamie Angles. Authors in a Box. Yes, right. And yeah. Authors in a Box. We authors can't wait. Box. We're going to be out there ourselves. We can't wait for that. That's going to be a lot I'm of fun. I'm sitting that one out and be on that. That might be it for this for this, this year. year. But uh, Yeah, we are. We're getting down to it now. Mm -hmm. Sound of the wire we're, here. We've been doing bit. appearances and signings. Now, I had to ask you guys real quick. I know she wants me to wrap it up, but I don't have to do what she says. I own the show. Atta boy. So um, <laughs> I, I do want to ask you guys. You did the market research. You're, you're into the short stories. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're used to... Let me see this here. Sure. When, when you're used to... A hundred thousand words. Mm -hmm. What kind of discipline does it take to do a short story? John's a lot better at that than I. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mostly because I'm lazy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, me too. I because I, I have to write in spurts. So I'll I'll do two chapters and then I'll do two more chapters and I'll do more. Well, but it's it's. You but know you're what? the hundred thousand word sprinter. Yeah, I am. And I'll tell you what. It's basically what you have to do is. Um, there's an art to, to writing short stories, and to me, it's knowing what you're doing with your character development. You have to, I mean, well, you, you have a couple like, of pages to where, develop I was going to say, where you got three chapters in a novel mm -hmm. to give the exposition needed to build yeah. a good person. If you, want, if you want one of your characters to be hated by your audience, you want this guy to be a real... You, got like, a, you got like three sentences. Exactly. That happen. I'm and, and you, Well, that, or the tone, or you, <laughs> you know, you make Seriously, some... Any path. I've done that before. Really? I, make, I, I like that's it. True. It actually I'm, works. I'm yeah. Kill any pet. And yeah. I, I've honestly, I hate hate to say, I, I've done that a lot with books. I've, uh, cruelty to animals. Um, I've established right off the way, that, or right off the bat, that this guy is a racist bigot. Wow. You know what I mean? And you, but you have to do that. You do that through action. You've got to do it quick. And, it can and be you hard find to that read. a lot easier to do. To do that. Right. And 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 the stories take different lengths. Like sometimes I have to struggle with a story for a couple of weeks. And I think for a short story, you have to know where it's going. You have to know the beginning, the middle, and the end before you start it. Yeah, because you can't build because you have to build all of those elements, that. those five elements of storytelling into right. if you don't have a map. And the middle, the middle story, interestingly enough, the one with the runes, I wrote in four and a half hours in one sitting. Just bam, wow. mm -hmm. it just it just came out. So you're lucky if that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a writer, you love it when you can get even if you're writing a novel, if you can get two yeah. chapters out and they just flow, yeah. where sure. it felt like your characters were just acting it out in your mind and all you were doing was taking notes. Right. That's like a good day. Yep. The rest of the day, you have to argue with them, and you're you're like it's like being on the phone with your in-laws. You're like, <laughs> please do what I said to do. Please, I want you to do this. So, okay, we're gonna wrap it up. As we wrap it up, because you're gonna make me, we're gonna thank our partners and friends. Some unique magazine, Space Coast Comics, Wordfire Press, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, Heather Reed in the Asylum Convention and Entertainment Services, as well as our brand new partners over at the Brevard Renaissance Fair, who are sharing in these videos all over the world by helping to share some fantastic creators like John Catabano and Tyson Hanks. I'm GW Pomager. We've been hanging with some of the Dark Alley crew, John Catapano and Tyson Hanks, at the Artworks O'Galley Fine Arts Festival in historic downtown O'Galley. Remember, folks, do us a favor. Share this video all over the web. Subscribe. Log on. Tune in. See who we're hanging with next.